Hey, how's it going everyone? Your boy Jolzy here, aka Comic Filth, and we're finally back with another video. <laughs> Apologise for everyone that's been uh, subscribed to the channel, my uh, output hasn't been the greatest of lately. Uh, the only major reason for that is um, I live in the state of Queensland. Um, if you don't live in Australia and you're not too sure uh, about Queensland, basically we have two weather types in Queensland. It's either really hot and dry and humid and everything's on fire, or we get torrential down with rain and everything's flooded. <laughs> so it can be a bit difficult to make videos. Uh, but anyway, I thought what we'd do is, uh, you know, we're almost at the end of 2023. I thought we'd do a uh, collection video, run through my collection and uh, yeah, just talk some shit about some stuff. Yeah, you might see something that you're interested in and uh, want to pull the trigger on. I'll be as uh, honest as possible. Um, but the thing is with my collection, it isn't like uh, this massive, like, you know, you might see some videos with dudes have like 50 calyxes and there's like omnibus galore um no it's a pretty well curated collection um and everything on here has been read at least once and in some instances a lot of books have been read like two three four times um but yeah anyway what we'll do is we'll start at the top here i'll start the spawn mug um, you know, I want my humanity back. Got that from a good friend uh, for Christmas. Um, if you're not aware, Spawn's one of my favorite characters. So I've got his little logo on my hand, and of course, I'm down there. Um, so yeah, very influential on me as a young fellow. Got this uh, fantastic paintings of Frazetta. Uh, if you're not too sure who Frank Frazetta is, he's just the granddaddy of uh, fantasy painting. A uh, really good book. Uh, and underneath, that's the uh, Jim Lee's X Men Artist Edition. Uh, you know, obviously, if you're a kid in the 90s, Jim Lee on X-Men was just mind-blowing uh, to get his artwork, like the original scans, um, and to just see it's insane. I don't collect single issues anymore, but I've got like some old school ones, like you got, I did a video on these, uh, Saga of the Swamp Thing, it, oh, sorry, Roots of the Swamp Thing, uh, it's just uh, reprints of the original Len Wein and Bernie Rice and stuff. Uh, one of my favourite comics as a kid, well, what if Wolverine was an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., some good Rob Liefeld action. Uh, I got a video on the channel of this as well. Uh, the A issue uh, mini <clears throat> mini series of Electra Assassin by Frank Miller and Bill Sienkiewicz. And we got uh, Frank Miller's Ronin. Uh, all the issues for that there. So yeah, some pretty pretty cool stuff there. Now move on to some of the trade paperbacks that I've got. Uh, so I got New Fifty Two. We got the uh, Suicide Squad Volume One kicked in the teeth and uh, Red Hood and the Outlaws Volume 1. I've had these for years, and uh, I've read these whole runs in single issues, uh, but these first two story arcs, like the start of them, were just so good. Uh, of course, uh, Mark Wayne, Alex Ross's Kingdom Come, uh, recent reprint. Uh, this one's awesome, because if you don't want to fork out the money for like an absolute or deluxe edition, this pretty much collects like all this heaps of bonus material for like a fraction of what those cost. And of course, Batman Year One by Frank Miller and David Mazzucchelli. Dark Knight Returns, of course. And then we've got the Jeff Loeb, Tim Sale. I guess oh, I wouldn't really call it a trilogy. DC tends to, but Haunted Nights, not really related to the Long Halloween and Dark Victory. I had the uh, Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale omnibus when that came out, but that thing was just a hunk of shit. Like, it just fell apart on me before I even, like, basically... Got out of the shrink wrap. Didn't even really touch it and just, yeah, exploded. Um, so, yeah. Batman Under the Red Hood. Classic stuff there. Uh, probably Scott Snyder's best work on Batman. Um, the Black Mirror. It's when Dick Grayson's Batman. I just got three Jokers in a trade. I know there's a standard size hardcover and a uh, Absolute. But I'm pretty cheap. <laughs> so, it's got the trade. A uh, Flash Rebirth. Bringing back uh, pretty much from Final Crisis, Barry Allen. And of course the event that kicked off the New 52 Flashpoint. One of the best Superman stories of all time, All-Star Superman by Frank Whiteley and Grant Morrison. Once again, I just got the trade as opposed to like the Deluxes or the um, Absolute. Uh, Wolverine and him in the state. I'm a big fan of Mark Millar's writing. I know a lot of people can consider it kind of edgy, but I quite dig it. Uh, Garth Ennis is uh, Welcome Back. Frank, obviously The Punisher, with Steve Dillon, so the guys that did Preacher. Um, I'm really keen for uh, the reprints of the <clears throat> Punisher Max line. Uh, Secret War, so Bendis and uh, Gabrielle Delotto. 
Secret Invasion. Um, I haven't watched the Marvel or Disney Plus. I'm, I'm not really far behind and stuff like that. So yeah, probably it looks like shit. So probably won't touch it. Uh, World War Hulk. I only got the trade for that because I like the story itself, but the times and that just don't justify me to get the omnibus. Uh, House of M. Same thing with this one. Just it doesn't justify me to get the omnibus. Uh, Civil War. Once again, Mark Millar. A lot of people hate the storyline. I actually really like it. And some more Millar. Uh, so Wolverine, Old Man Logan. Just, yeah, fantastic. Uh, you know, Mad Max, The Unforgiven. Chuck and Wolverine in there. That's what you got there. Uh, the only... I think they're called modern, e yeah, modern era epic collections. Uh, so it's Avengers or New Avengers. Um, and I like this one because it's Bendis at his peak, in my opinion. Um, and pretty much, yeah, making the Avengers a cool title again in the mid-2000s. I just got some random vinyl records. Um, if you're into, like, black or death metal, um, I've got, like, a lot of the classics. So, yeah, it's my favorite albums that I spin. Anyway, moving down here, we got uh, Hellboy, Monster Size. Uh, this is a massive book. Um, pretty much like that big damn Sin City that Dark Horse did all those years ago. Just insane. I only have the first two Spawn compendiums, um, just because I have read about the first 250-ish issues of Spawn, um, which there are some good writers and artists, but the first 100 issues of that Todd McFarlane, Greg Capullo magic, just love it. Darkness, so Mark Silvestri and uh, his top cow. Uh, one of his top cow creations in the mid to late 90s. Uh, there's two video games on the 360 and PS3. Actually, really good, to be honest. Uh, and, of course, his first image book, Cyberforce. Just got that in the standard size hardcover. And we got Eric Larson's image title, Savage Dragon. That was such a good book when I was a kid. And uh, Dave Stevens' um, deluxe edition of The Rocketeer. Uh, there's an overview on the channel for this book as well. It's fucking gorgeous. Uh, big fan of Dave Stevens and just the Rocketeer in general. Um, this one, Faust, um, of the Dam. So this is uh, David Quinn and Tim Vigil's Outlaw comic from the late 80s. Uh, I think concluded in 2012. I would like to do a video on the channel about this, but because of the content in it, I'll probably get banned straight away. Uh, the Art of Tom McFarlane. Uh, so this originally came out in 2012 as a hardcover, uh, but I've just got the softcover version of it. Um, you know, if you're a Tom McFarlane fan, you see his stuff when he was a kid up until, I guess, whatever was he was doing in 2012. Uh, of course, you know, you got your Watchmen's and your um, Batman killing jokes. I think everyone and their mum and their dogs got these books. Of course, it's a classic for a reason. Uh, all six volumes of Kasuhiro Otomo is Akira. Uh, just, yeah, classic stuff. My brother and I first found out about Akira going to our local blockbuster and borrowing out the VHS in the early 90s and were just blown away. We didn't know animation could look like that. And the magnet's just even better. I'll go down here. Uh, so I've got an overview on the channel of this one as well. Uh, so this is uh, Billy Tushi She, Omnibus Volume 1, uh, during the 90s bad girl movement. <laughs> and we've got the two compendiums of the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles by W. Yeah, good stuff there. I'm a big fan of Mass Effect. Uh, I really like the first three games. I've never played Andromeda, uh, but Dark Horse released this book where it collects all the um, comics. I remember it was a big hardcover uh, back in the day, but that's been out of print for so long and they've just ended up putting all the uh, comics in a nice affordable uh, trade. Uh, of course, Frank Miller's Sin City. Huge fan of this book. Um, pretty much anything Frank Miller does. I actually really like the two movies as well. So there you go. you got all these bad boys here. And uh, the last one to Helen Back's got some uh, really cool uh, cameos from certain characters. Um, Garth Ennis and Steve Dillon's Preacher um, just yeah probably one of my favorite comic books of all time just insane um, the absolutes like the three of them they look really nice uh, but they are pretty pretty pricey and mind you an omnibus isn't like 
anywhere near as cheap either, to be honest, but I was just pretty happy. I had the original uh, six thick trades that they did and just ended up upgrading to these Omnis. Uh, of course, Garp Ennis and um, Derek Robertson's The Boys. I uh, just got these uh, hardcover Omnibuses that Dynamite's put out recently. I'm currently watching the show. I'm almost finished season two, and yeah, um, I love the show as well, but uh, I think the comics are a bit better in my opinion at this stage, but they go off in two completely different directions, which is awesome. Uh, one of the only Deadpool comics I can actually stomach before he becomes cringe is uh, Deadpool and Cable, but it was originally called Cable and Deadpool. Um, but obviously they've, you know, they've changed the title to what sells better. A new X-Men by Grant Morrison, and he's got collaborators here for like Frank Whiteley, The Man Skyver. A uh, good run there. Uh, Moon Knight has the modern stuff from like the uh, mid 2000s. Uh, David Finch is on the artwork for the first couple issues. Fantastic. Uh, probably one of my favorite events when I was a kid during the 90s. Probably a lot of people was the uh, Age of Apocalypse. Uh, just yeah. Love that shit. <laughs> uh, the Ultimate, so more Mark Miller and he's joined by a uh, freaking collaborator, Brian Hitch. Uh, pretty much if you're a fan of the first Avengers movie, uh, a lot of the heavily inspired by this. Planet Hulk. Uh, so the reason why I got Planet Hulk Omnibus and not the trade as opposed to like a World War Hulk, um, this actually is a full story. Um, you know, there's not all sorts of crazy tie-ins and stuff like that. As you can see, it's not really a thick Omnibus, but it's just probably one of the best Hulk stories ever. Um, I've got the, th the first three... Brew Baker, Captain America Omnibuses. I still need to pick up the last two that have just recently come out. Uh, so obviously, just got this first one, this title, Captain America. Obviously introducing the Winter Soldier. Spoiler alerts, Death of Captain America. And of course, more spoiler alerts, Captain America Lives. You know, it's comics, they don't stay dead for long. I've uh, got the first, well, the only three are uh, Omnibuses of Ultimate Spider-Man so far. Um... Obviously, there's a death of one or whatnot, but so it's volume one. Uh, so Brian Michael Bendis and uh, Mark Bagley, it's record-breaking run. Uh, volume two, I think that's a variant. And volume three, that was just recently released. Love that homage. Uh, the only Aliens omnibus I've got, just because it's mostly old school uh, Dark Horse stuff that I grew up reading as a kid. Uh, so Aliens, the original years, volume one. And same with the Predator, most of the Dark Horse stuff that I read as a kid. And this uh, Chris Warner cover is so iconic. Like, you see that shit so many times. So good. Alright, back in you go. I'll start up here now. This is pretty much just all DC moving forward. Uh, so, Absolute Doomsday Clock. Um, I really like this series. Yeah, it took a long time to come out in singles. Um, so, you know, Jeff Johns, uh, pretty much the seeds he planted in the new 52 and Rebirth come to a uh, close. Uh, Absolute Wildcats by Jim Lee. Uh, so, more image 90s goodness, but obviously published by DC since Jim Lee sold uh, his Wildstorm imprint to DC in like 98 or something like that. Um, really infamous book, uh, All-Star, Batman and Robin by Frank Miller and Jim Lee. Um, let's go have a look at the other side. It's got Batman on it. There we go. I um, actually don't mind this story. <laughs> but yeah, I can understand the criticism and hate it gets. Uh, probably my favourite comic book of all time, Batman Hush. Uh, Jeff Loeb, Jim Lee, of course. Um, yeah, this thing got me back into comics after a long hiatus. And uh, yeah, to own an absolute format, so good. Uh, so DC Comics, The Art of Jim Lee. Uh, this is originally a book, I think it was printed by Titan Books. Uh, but then DC's obviously grabbed it and reprinted it and um, just updated it a bit. And I have no idea when Volume 2 will come out or what it will contain. Uh, Batman Detective Comics by Peter J. Tomasi. Uh, it's a pretty good run. Uh, I really like the Mr. Free story arc and the Arkham Knight one. Uh, not to be like mixed up with the, the video game on PS4. Uh, this is a fun book. Batman Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Omnibus. Got an overview on the channel for this one. Uh, James Tinyan and uh, Freddie Williams. Just, yeah. If you're a fan of both uh, franchises, you'll love this. Uh, I've got the Omnibus for Dark Knight's Metal, but I probably will not get Death Metal or anything like that because I really like this. I don't mind Death Metal, but... Yeah, it's just a bit of a fucking mess 
compared to to metal. I feel like metal you can actually read it and you know enjoy it a bit more. Like it's still silly as fuck, but yeah. Uh, Batman Spawn. Um, so you're collecting the 2022 uh, story that they did, plus the classics from 1994. Another book that was originally with Image, but then DC got it. So uh, Gen 13 starting over collects the first uh, like the mini series with uh, J a uh, young J Scott Campbell on art. A JLA by Grant Morrison, Omnibus. Uh, probably one of the best superhero uh, series. Um, Grant Morrison, obviously, you know, he's a pretty wacky dude. But with this, it's pretty much really straightforward superhero storytelling. And uh, there's a bit of Grant Morrison-isms in there. But, um, yeah, it's probably easily the, some of the best Justice League. And speaking of good Justice League, we've got the New 52 era. Um, so Jeff Johns... Uh, you know, he's got guys like Jim Lee and uh, Ivan Race, Gary Frank. Uh, he's got tons of collaborators on this. And it's insane, man. Like, you think of Justice League, how shit <laughs> they sell now. But at one stage when the New 52 was, like, this is, like, a book that you're excited for. Like, it's insane. Like, how good this shit is. Dark Side War, capping off the end. Uh, Teen Titans by Jeff Johns. Um... Some of the best Teen Titans stuff here. Really, like, if you're a fan of the 80s, um, Marv Wolfman and George Perez stuff, yeah, it's pretty much just this, except, you know, in the mid-2000s. Uh, we got Batman by Grant Morrison, all three volumes. Um, really big fan of Grant Morrison's Batman run. Um, I think the whole six, seven years that he was on it uh, was a lot of fun. Uh, volume 2 gets a bit weird, so that's where the most Grant Morrison-isms come out. Um, but then... Volume 3, where it has all the Batman Incorporated stuff, picks up. Uh, Batman by Greg Capullo and Scott Snyder. Uh, Omnibus Volume 1 and 2. Um, Court of Owls, fucking hands down. The best storyline out of this, which happens to be the first storyline. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of this book. Um, but when Zero Hour was coming out... No, not Zero Hour, that's a fucking DC event from the 90s. Zero Year um, was coming out. Uh... That was very frustrating. The volume two there. Uh, then we got probably the best Batman from Rebirth. Uh, this shit's all over Tom King's run. Um, I know there's like you know no point in comparing them. People might like Tom King more than this, but uh, it's just my opinion. <laughs> um, so Batman: Rise and the Fall of the Batman. Uh, so this is uh, James Tiny and Detective Comics run during Rebirth. Uh, yeah, this shit's insane. It's so good. It's such a blast to read. Uh, Superman Batman, uh, Omnibus Volume 1 and 2. Uh, so this is from 2003 to 2011, the series. Uh, you got Jeff Loeb starting it off, and he's got uh, Ed McGuinness on artwork, and uh, Michael Turner on the first story arcs, and they made um, animated movies based on those first two uh, issues. Really good. I've uh, got some more of that uh, Peter J. Tomasi, uh, but this time it's with his uh, freaking collaborator, pa uh, Patrick Leeson. Uh, so you got their new 52... Uh, it's primarily New 52 there, uh, Batman and Robin series, which was sick. And their Rebirth Superman stuff, which was amazing. And um, look, I'm not going to be one of those people that hates on how they did John Kent for obvious reasons. You know, people call you a bigot or whatnot. But if you read this and then all the other shit that come afterwards, yeah, like this is just so much fun. They really killed the character, in my opinion. Uh, you got Superman by Grant Morrison. Uh, it's probably not the easiest read for most people. Um, it was supposed to be a starting point for Superman, obviously, because it was at the start of the New 52. Uh, it's action, his action comics run. Um, but yeah, no, nah, it's not really easy for people that aren't familiar with Superman to get into, so I can see why. Yeah. So if you're wanting a good Superman starting book, that's probably not the place to go, but I really enjoy it. Uh, Aquaman by Jeff Johns. Uh, so Jeff Johns made Aquaman, like, cool. <laughs> so there's no doubt about it. And I was not an Aquaman fan until I was picking this up during the new 52 days. And yeah, this shit's dope. Uh, the first Aquaman movie is heavily inspired by this. Um, probably my favorite, not just DC event, but event comics in all time, uh, Infinite Crisis. Uh, and the way this omnibus is mapped is fucking perfect. Like, you can read this from start to finish and there's no awkward jumps in time or... Like, you feel like you're retreading something or anything like that. It's just mapped to perfection. And all the mini series leading up to the event actually mean something. So it's not just, like, random shit. Uh, and then 52 Omnibus, uh, so the event that follows Infinite Crisis. Um, 
So this is uh, DC's first stab at doing the whole uh, weekly comic thing. And so obviously it's all 52 issues, makes a whole year. Um, There's a good time when it was coming out. Uh, they've tried to do it a couple times since then with like things like Countdown and um, things called Trinity. And then of course with the Batman Eternal sub, which they've all been all right, but yeah, 52 was just magical. Uh, Final Crisis. Uh, I fucking hated the storyline when it came out back in 2007, 2008. Um, but I have since come to love it after reading it many, many, many times. And this Omnibus is great. Uh, I've got the trade for Flashpoint, obviously. And I've got the Omnibus. Um, I like the trade because sometimes when I feel like reading Flashpoint, I don't want to hold down a big book. Uh, but this Omnibus is good. A lot of the tie-ins in here are, uh, you know, decent to average. And there's some that are just shit. Um, but I think if you're a fan of that Flashpoint world, this does a good job of, like, you know, really exploring it a bit further for you. Uh, the Aquaman Wonder Woman stuff's great. Uh, Batman by Paul Dini Omnibus. Uh, so Paul Dini, obviously one of the creators for the Batman of the Animated series. Uh, Harley Quinn and all that. And uh, yeah, his Omnibus is good. It's the detective comic stuff he was doing uh, when Grant Morrison was working on his Batman run at the time. Uh, probably one of the most underrated comics in recent years is Deathstroke by Christopher Priest. Uh, this shit is fucking insane. Like, I love this book. Um, Christopher Priest's writing on Deathstroke is insane. Um, the, you know, it's quite a big book, but it, yeah, it just flows so well. It's so good. It feels like an AMC show, but, like, not a shit one. Um, like, you know, they're all really bad people, but you kind of start rooting for them because the people that they're up against are worse. <laughs> I mean, you can kind of see why they are the way they are. Uh, so yeah, it's really fantastic. Uh, Swamp Thing, so New 52. Uh, so Scott Snyder is first writing it. And then I think Charles Soule takes over. Uh, really good stuff here. Um, it was good to see Swamp Thing come back and have his own monthly title again after so long. Uh, Gotham Central Omnibus. Uh, you know, Ed Brubaker. Greg Rucker doing crime noir sort of stuff, but in Gotham City. And it focuses on the PD. Uh, yeah, this is sweet. So good. Uh, Gail Simone's Batgirl uh, Returns Omnibus, uh, so New 52 stuff uh, before Batgirl uh, became pretty fucking shit, um, but uh, it's Barbara Gordon returning, because before that she was in a wheelchair for God, like, almost, like, pretty much, like, two decades, yeah, she was Oracle. Um, <clears throat> a lot of fans didn't like that, myself included, because I preferred Stephanie Brown or Cassandra Kane, uh, and I thought Oracle was a badass character in her own right, but, um, yeah. No biggie. No, probably, in my opinion, Jeff John's best superhero works. All three JSAs. Um, it's just a fantastic series. Uh, Jeff John's can get you to care about D-list characters and make them feel like A-listers. There's all three of them there. Uh, Justice League Dark New 52. Um, this is written by a fair few people. I think Peter Milligan... Uh, <clears throat> J.M. DeMatteis and you get Jeff Lemire on a lot of the storylines here uh, cool stuff just Justice League but Supernatural characters uh, one of my favourite New 52 books Batwoman um, so you got Greg Rucker kicking it off um, during just before the New 52 in Detective Comics but um, J.H. Williams III takes over with the artwork and the storytelling and uh, yeah it's such a good series uh, and probably one of the best comic books uh, runs of history in my opinion uh, Jeff John's run on Green Lantern uh, he's like nine years on this thing um, I never cared for Green Lantern or Hal Jordan or anything like that but when I first read Rebirth back in the day I was like holy shit and yeah like this is just so good there's a reason why you see a lot of dudes have these books in their collections and uh, so good you know Blackest Night Rage of the Red Lanterns War of the Green Lanterns Agent Orange, Secret Origin, just so many good storylines. Blackest Night Omnibus, uh, there are bits and pieces from Volume 2 of this in here, um, but this collects obviously the whole event and a lot of the uh, Green Lantern core stuff surrounding the event as well, which is really good. Uh, I think it's one of, I think it is DC's biggest Omnibus, it's a fucking huge thing. Uh, and of course Brightest Day, uh, the event that followed afterwards, I really enjoyed Brightest Day, I was stoked to see this get a reprint. Uh, I think it was last year, 2022. So, yeah, good stuff. All right, guys, well, there is my collection. As I mentioned, not huge, but it's pretty well curated, as you can tell. Um, and probably 
add a couple more things, bits and pieces here and there while I can. Uh, but apart from all that, cheers for watching and yeah, take care.